Become a member of the National At-Home Dad Network, an organization focused on providing advocacy, community, education, and support. Connecting with households where dad is the primary caregiver of the children. We do this through our webinar and podcast series, mental health support groups, regular online social events, as well as our annual convention. The National At-Home Dad Network is a 100% volunteer organization. Without the generous support of its members and the community around it, we would not be able to continue the work that we do. Becoming a member gives you access to past convention speaker presentations, the ability to vote for board members annually, and ensures that the organization's fees and bills are in positive standing. Oh yeah, it should not go unmentioned that there is some cool swag headed your way if you decide to become a member. For only $35 a year, your membership provides you with the exclusive content only we can generate, and you'll be supporting an organization that benefits families all around the country and world. By advocating for them, offering them community, providing education and guidance, and supporting them to grow in their parenthood journey. And one last thing, if you contribute $500 or more, you will become a lifetime member. Not only will you receive everything already mentioned, but also a certificate recognizing your status and an exclusive National At Home Dad Network challenge coin with our trademark logo, Dads Don't Babysit. So what are you waiting for? Become a member today. Welcome to Home Dad Chat, brought to you by the National At Home Dad Network. My name is Brock. My name is Danny. And we are here to talk about life as stay at home dad. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. No, I don't want much. I even love handmade crafts made of macaroni. Come on now, you should know me. Sometimes I might eat too much. No worry about my weight. Got the dad bod rocking on me. Sketches on my feet. Cargo shorts look good on me. I'm a dad, that's what I do. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Home Dad Chat. Hope y'all had a great week. Uh, it's been an interesting week so far uh, for me, but it's all good. It's been nice weather, so I can't complain there. Uh, mm-hmm. Danny, man, we, uh, we're going to make it two weeks in a row. It's gonna, we're gonna, we got two weeks in a row of putting <laughs> stuff out. <laughs> no, I, I'm just starting a new trend, right? Uh, yeah, new, new, trend. new trend. Well, you know, if, if you're like the Cincinnati Reds, you know, you're just trying to get that winning streak going. That's all you <laughs> just keep, once you get the momentum, you'll be fine. <laughs> and unfortunately, well, you know, we, we could just tell people we're actually, we, we do every other week, but there's sometimes yeah. we're just couldn't stop. You know, we do it weekly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, we'll, we'll try not to hit a no, no and lose. So, uh, yeah, that's that's what the reds pulled off last week so <laughs> we don't need that to happen but yeah man i mean i like i said like this is it's been an interesting week but the, I, I learned something mm-hmm. today and i think this falls into the background of your your previous life with uh hvac stuff um so i decided that today i would tear into my window ac units that my kid that go in my kids bedrooms and let me just say i've neglected really doing a deep dive into that before but today <laughs> today i did and boy were my eyes open to everything that i've been missing now, is this the first time in how long like has it been like a year five years a decade when how long have they been so i'm gonna say i mean i've cleaned them to a point but to do what i did today where i actually like tore them down mm-hmm. Took the case, open case and all that. Yeah. yeah. To get in to like the wheel, to like the fan housing and stuff like that. Oh that yeah. I, I've never done that. And I've had those units for at least seven years. Yeah. Easily. It's time for sure. It is. Yeah. Because so how dirty was the fan? Let's just say the, um, <laughs> the one, the one of them, I mean, it scared me at first because I didn't realize it actually had a black entered to it but Mm -hmm. um it was pretty dirty but then the other one when i opened it up i thought it had a black entered in it as well but honestly it was just black mold everywhere inside of it uh so it was like lysol to the rescue just spray them down let them sit for five ten minutes or whatever and then rinse the heck out of them with a hose and watch all of this nastiness like come out of it. And I'm like, I'm like, I had no idea. Like, I mean, I pull the filters off and I'm, I'm shot vacuum those off and cleaning mm-hmm. them out and everything. But 
the amount of stuff that came out of those units. I'm like, no wonder my kids like still can they still have like these allergy <laughs> issues during the summer. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm putting an unhealthy freaking unit like in their room. And it, it got me thinking like how many, how many parents, how many dads, like, you know, they put these units in and they just don't think twice about it. Like they might clean like that filter por portion that like gets all the fuzzies and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. like all, all the dust, but how many of these guys are actually going in? Like, and it's only like three or four screws. It's not big. It doesn't take much to like get that yeah. casing off and get in there. But it's the whole idea of like, you know, who wants to, you know, who has the time to do that or wants to do that or whatever. But honestly, mm -hmm. it's important. Oh my gosh. Like I will forever be doing that every single year. Yeah. We, and you don't realize how much stuff goes through that system. And like you said, I mean, it's something you put in your window, but it is literally a constant flow of something right. into your room so yeah and it's grabbing all the pollen and everything else because it's sitting mm -hmm. on the other side of that window and then you get it raining and then it gets hot mm -hmm. and oh my gosh yeah i i, I learned a lot today and <laughs> i feel like i you owe know, my kids an apology honestly for that's, that's probably the best way i think for a lot of people to really understand it like truly to realize something is just go ahead and crack the case of whatever it is, get in there and, and start seeing what you've got to see. Like, even if it's your computer, if it's your car, uh, if it's your lawnmower engine, whatever it is, once you've gotten into it and you go, Oh, okay. So that's why I don't leave gas <laughs> in my lawnmower over the winter. Cause this is like gunk now, you know, and it yeah. doesn't get dirty necessarily, but you can tell that it's just all gummed up and you've got to clean it out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. That's, I mean, uh, like I went up to David McMillan's the other day and, mm -hmm. uh, he was working on his tractor and uh, he's like, Hey, you want to see something? I'm like, yeah, sure. What? He's like, here, this is my, my, uh, uh, air filter or fuel filter. That's what it was. It was like, this is the fuel filter to the tractor. And it was just, I mean, you could have squeezed it. Like it was just nasty. I'm like, yeah. when did you, I was like, you've had this thing for a couple of years. He's like, yeah. And he's like, and I have no idea, like, you know, what was done with it prior to that. So he's right. like, I basically, you know, ordered like a whole new kit and stuff to put on. I'm like, man, you're basically putting new lungs on your tractor. <laughs> so, yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's insane. Like that. Yeah. The things that you're like, Oh, no biggie. You know, like for instance, um, you know, your refrigerator, you know, how many people take the time to actually like, you know, vacuum the under portion yeah. of the back and, and also the pull coils and yeah, mm -hmm. pull it out and vacuum off because honestly, like, you know, people constantly like myself included are like, Hey, why isn't X, Y, Z thing working on my refrigerator? Nine times out of 10, it's dust. Yeah. Just the coils have clogged so, up and yeah. Yeah. And anything, I mean, you're talking with, when you talk about HVAC, it all comes down to, and the, the, the primary rule is airflow is King. Yes. The top most important thing on any system for AC, especially is airflow. Yep. And that's why like a lot of people will get it. Well, my, you know, my, 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 it stopped working. It's blowing air, but it's not cold air, but then it'll get cold again. And, you know, I'll turn it off at a little, and there's now a puddle of water under the furnace. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. It's like, well, okay. So your filter is a piece of wood now because you've got so much stuff in there and it needs, it needs to be replaced every 30 days. And it's been a month, six months, yeah, eight year, you know, whatever. But then the coil will is not getting enough airflow. So it just freezes solid into a block of ice basically. And yeah. you just turn it on and let it melt, you know, run the fan only let it melt and hopefully get that coil or that uh, filter clean. Yeah. Cause if the filter doesn't get clean, then the coil starts to get stuff under it. And a coil cleaning is, is kind of pricey. And mm -hmm. there's some furnaces you can't do a coil cleaning on. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it comes down to more skill than like the, cause it's just some detergent basically. And then some, yeah, usually water flow or maybe airflow, but if you don't spray it from the right direction, you're just making the problem worse. Right. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So that's another thing. Well, and you were talking about airflow. airflow. Is king. Yeah. Airflow is King. So, uh, dryer units, for instance, a couple of mm -hmm. weeks ago, my dryer wasn't doing what it normally does. Like I'm like, I would run it through a cycle. I'm like, the clothes is still like lightly damp. Like what is going on? Mm -hmm. And I pull the clothes out. I'm looking in there and I'm like, this isn't making much sense. I pull out the, you know, the filter thing and it's, you know, normal, but then I look down and you could just see like all of this lint and I'm like, Oh my gosh. So I pull out the screwdriver, or pull out the yeah screwdriver, pull out all the screws there, pop out the piece that holds mm -hmm. the filter on. And I get in there and I start vacuuming that all out. 
And I'm like, okay, like that looks like it's pretty clean. I'm like, but something still doesn't seem right. Flip the thing around. I take the hose off of the back. I look at the hose and uh, the hose itself doesn't look awful. Like I cleaned it out, no big deal. But then I looked at the piece that actually attaches to where like the lint comes down into to like shoot out. And that thing is caked with like an, with like an inch of lint all the way around. And I'm like, here's my problem. Yeah. Your arteries clogged. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So, so I tore into that and cleaned that all out. And, uh, you know, I'm in there like, you know, basically giving the tin man an enema, like going all the way in <laughs> like with a towel, uh, clean it all out and uh, put it all back together and uh, haven't had a problem since. And I'm just like, man, like, I don't need, I like, I've had that thing for a few years. I've never done that. I'm like, man, that's mm-hmm. something I need to start doing on a regular basis as well. And I, you know, we all do laundry all the time and it's like, right. You know, when stuff like that goes wrong, don't call a repair man, just YouTube it or, you know, put it in the dad group and ask them or, yeah. you know, just start, just start going to town on it. What are you Look doing for down a mentor. there, honey? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look for a mentor. We got the mentorship program. Those guys, those guys are a wealth of knowledge. So yeah, just ask anybody in the, especially in the network and just like, Hey, uh, this is going on and you'll get, uh, you'll get 10 or 15 people that have already yeah. run through this, have done through this, you know, done this before. And we're like, Oh yeah, well you got to blah, blah, yeah, whatever it is. Well, it helps it, you know, it helps. We do have lots of guys with backgrounds. Like, you know, you've got your background in HVAC. Uh, we've got, you know, guys who have plumbing, electrical, that kind of stuff. Uh, one of our dads who has a, a background in electrical now uh, posted probably one of the most hilarious, interesting Facebook posts on the group in a while. Did, did you see uh, Anthony Alvarez's post about his kid <laughs> and the uh, issue at Alti? Anthony, at, at Aldi? I love that dude. <laughs> He's always good for a laugh. He's, he is definitely good for a laugh. He's a good man. He seems like a good man. I hope to meet him someday. Oh, um, man. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to tell the, the, the Aldi story? for? Yeah, for yeah. Anthony? I'll definitely tell the We're Aldi. assuming I, that Anthony will be okay with us publicizing think, this to the, to the 10, 15 people that listen to us. Well, yeah, he'll be okay. We won't talk about, we, well, if we talk about any of the other, because uh, there's some really good stories below it too. Uh, we won't tell their names, but I don't think Anthony will have a problem because we've mentioned him before on the show. He's never yeah. said anything other of it. So yeah, so Anthony's at Aldi. He is uh, with his daughter and they are in line and they've been teaching their daughter how like the, the, the parts of the anatomy and, and proper terms of the anatomy too. You know, and that's, that's something that's really important is that you teach your kids mm-hmm. proper terms of the anatomy. And, and unfortunately, this little young lady decided that she was going to make it darn well known uh, that, you know, she had figured out. She, you know, she understands. That she yeah. understands. Yeah, exactly. And, and so she, she basically at the top of her lungs yells, uh, Papa, don't touch my vagina, my privates. And, uh, and Anthony's like, yes. whoa, wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> like, like he's in Look line y'all. paying. <laughs> yeah. I'm Nothing sure. is going on. I am not touching yeah. my kid. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he turned quite red in the face. <laughs> um, you know, he looks down at her and he's like, hey, like, you know, me and me and mama were the, you know, we're the ones that help you clean up that kind of stuff. Like, so it's just, and she doubles down and says it mm-hmm. again. And I'm like, oh, like I'm reading through this and I'm going, oh my God, at this point, like I want to just shrink into the smallest ball. Like I feel so bad for Anthony, you know? And, you know, he basically just yells, dude, stop yelling at you or Mm -hmm. yelling that you're going to catch these hands. Like, and that I think is more of him in his head saying that, but it's like totally like, Oh my gosh, like stop, just stop. And so I get it. You're absolutely right. But please stop screaming out. that. Right. But it's just so funny. You're like, that's, this is like, totally love the fact that you understand what we're talking about. This is the most inappropriate place right now to be saying that, Um, Yeah. you know, type of deal, but it brought on this whole slew of other members like chiming in with with stories of either their kids or they themselves and the things that fall in line afterwards which i love it like the first one is a meme of samuel L. jackson from i think it's from like black mamba or something and he's black all snake like, moon or black state yeah black state moon that's what it is and he's all like looking like kind of like ooh, you know and that's, that's the that's angry dad look the, yeah the look of well this is the look of all the people in the store like what did she say 
okay? <laughs> you touching that child? No, it's just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if you have young kids, I think you'd get it immediately. Uh, you you, got you know, it. if you're even if you're you know, your kids have gotten into like even the early teens, you still very well remember the times when you had to teach your child what a penis was, what a yeah, what a, you know, what they're what to call their bottom, you know, whatever it might yep. be. And and it's really it's hilarious, too, because the different ways that people because we're I always told my kids like, you know, once they were, you know, washing themselves, I'm like, you know, OK, you, you take a bath, make sure you wash your hair, get your butt in bits. You know, mm -hmm. and that was just it. Cause I didn't, it didn't matter because it was boys or girls, just that's, they all have butts, they all have bits. And then they go to school and the teacher's like, oh, well, um, you have to call it a bottom. It's, it, we can't really say that. And I'm like, <laughs> but, but bothers you. Wow. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, and I'm a pretty genteel family from the South with <laughs> no problem saying, but, no but anyway, yeah. So, and the kids just, just so embarrassing. And huh, they're just yeah. being, you know, they're just trying to be the person that they, they are you know, uh, that, that you're teaching them to be really. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Well, good, and, good dadding. Yeah, you are now. Now you're going <laughs> to, you're going to go to jail. Sorry. No. Yeah. Well, that's so just a rabbit trail off a little bit on that. Like, so for instance, like things that people see and experience that other parents do with their kids um, when they don't have the full story can tend to cause some huge issues for that school that family no just for that family like there's yeah. a there's like for instance there's oh, a yeah. family here in cincinnati right now that's catching a ton of heat because they they have always as a family they've run the flying pig marathon and mm -hmm. they've had their youngest at the time i think she was seven maybe she ran with them nobody oh, that's really cool. Nobody, exactly. There you go. Okay. So nobody, nobody thought twice about it. They thought it was great. Okay. So then this year, their youngest is six mm -hmm. and it's been a few years, uh, since they've run it like this. And so this six year old wanted to run it and they ran and people were like appalled, like that whole like cancel culture. And like, I'm just going to get mad because somebody's doing something that doesn't fit within my box kind of deal took place. Mm -hmm. And people were like accusing them of like, you know, dragging the kid and like all this other stuff. And they had police officers around them that had like seen them not do any of this stuff. And yeah. like they videoed the whole thing too on a GoPro. Um, but still like to the point where like people were calling into CPS and yeah. CPS is pretty good about like vet vetting what goes on. But somebody told a convincing enough story for CPS to oh, yeah. show up the uh, one day at the house and start questioning everybody about what was going on. And then, um, that case actually came back as non-valid. They, they, um, you know, said that there wasn't anything there for them to go after, but then they came back a second time with like for a whole nother reason. And so they're going through like all this stuff and they've been on all kinds of like new shows and different things, but it's this whole idea of like, they have a different parenting style than everybody else. It is not child abuse, what they are doing. They're giving their no. kids a different experience of life that mm -hmm. fits way outside of most people's comfort zone. But these kids are happy. Like I've, I've experienced, I've witnessed these kids do things. Like I've, I follow a couple of the older ones on Instagram and stuff. And mm -hmm. Like that's just their, that's just their life. That's the way they do things. But man, they are just dealing with a bunch of eat. And it's that whole idea of it just not fitting with the box or like for in this case, like hearing a kid say something and then like thinking that that's what's going on without getting the yeah. whole picture of, of things. Oh, so yeah. yeah I I, <laughs> defects CPS, but it was defects in Georgia department of family and children services. The defects showed up at my house. Mm. Um, they called, I mean, they called my wife and said, Hey, I need you to come home right now. This is, you know, this de de defects we're, we're headed to your house and I need you to meet me there. And my wife's an hour away at work. And I'm wow. like, okay, they didn't call me. <laughs> mm. And so the lady showed up and I'm like, and why did my wife have to be here? And what are you doing? But, you know, we were very, you don't have to let like defects in your house. You know, they may come back with a warrant if something's, you know, so that, you know, it can be easier to let them in. I would suggest letting them in, but you don't have to, you don't have to sure. show up. You don't have to go, Oh yeah, I'll come right home from work. But we did. Um, and I was already there, but yeah. so my kindergartner, I think she was in kindergarten and he was in first. And my, my Lizzie, my youngest said, um, that she'd seen her brother's penis. Okay. And you know, that, that he'd shown her his penis. And I'm like, yeah, they were taking a bath together like six, eight months ago. I'm sure 
I mean, we didn't sure. really point it out or anything, but yeah, I'm sure she's seen, you know, and it's a, it's not that big a deal when your kids are in diapers together, either they're, they're going right. to see each other naked, you know, right. But the teacher lost her mind called defects and defects came out and, and I'm like, this is ridiculous. I will say it was the most humiliating and just embarrassing thing for them to, to the way they talked to us and the way they acted in the house and, you know, and just the, 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 yeah. the, the way they treated us like they, we were, we were guilty of something and they right. were going to find it. I mean, the lady comes in and she's like, well, I'm going to look in your refrigerator. And I'm like, okay. And she opens the fridge and of course they're looking to see if we have food. And I'm like, Oh, look at my kids. They're all fat. My kids are fat. You telling me we don't have food. We're not feeding our kids. You don't have to look in the fridge. Look at the kids. <laughs> you know, come on. We don't have to do that. And then she, she went over and she turned the water on to make sure the water was running. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Oh my goodness. Do, do, does my house look like, do my kids smell like they don't have water? Come on, you know, wow. but they were just, you know, they, they really, they're just checking all the boxes on a list. They're oh, not sure. really, it's nothing yeah. personal and you have to look at it that way. But the, 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 the thing of it is, is they do vet their calls and they do look at it, but they would rather let, you know, err on the side of caution, which is what Marnie and I went with I'm like, okay, you check out anything you want to check out. And yeah, we'll go talk to the, they, we took them to a, not a psych, maybe it was a child psychologist, but it was somewhere they have a little facility there that you take your kids. If anything is going on or suspected of going on, you know, right. and, and they basically, well, here, draw, draw a picture of your family life, little kindergartner. Cause you know, like the kindergartner can't talk for themselves. My kindergartner could, <laughs> she's got a really great vocabulary. Of course. And he's like, she really loves to draw. But then I just asked her what to say, what was going on. And she looked at me and told me everything. And I'm like, everything uh, like dad's got a bad temper and I yelled at a lot because I don't do that. I think, but <laughs> well, what did I do wrong? What did she tell you? And she, oh, no, no, it was all great. I don't see any reason why, you know, this was just yep. kids see, you know, each other, you know, it's not, it's not a big deal, you know, yeah. but anyway, it was, it was yeah. a big thing. And it was for me. And I think for Marnie too, it was huge. Because oh, it's sure. that, you know, whoa, you're a horrible human being. You're a terrible parent. And I've got, I feel that already. I don't need somebody to come on the outside and tell me that I don't think I'm doing, you know, I'm doing a bad job as a parent. You know, that's just human nature, I think. But having them there was just like rough. But I can not imagine it being basically a televised thing. Yeah. You know, that you're on your social yeah. media and that people are coming to you on your Instagram, whatever, and going, hey, I heard you abused your kid yeah. by making them. I don't know, by dragging them along the ground behind you on a rope while you ran this marathon or whatever. I mean, well, what's really interesting is crazy when, so the actual like headlines and stuff like that, like they give the horrible depiction of what's going on. But yeah. then when you read the article or you listen to them actually during an interview, like you get a completely different side of it where you're like, oh, well, that, that makes sense. Like, I don't like, they shouldn't have had that happen. Like mm -hmm. he talked to uh, Pierce Morgan, actually, like they had him on that show and like he let uh, Pierce let the, the dad talk for like three minutes about the situation. And in the end, Pierce was like, well, that's completely different than what I was told. Like that makes yeah, the total sense. Like, yeah, like I can, I'm completely on your guys' side for the, you know, the way that that was done and taken care of. And, and that's been the situation more times than not is that even these television anchors are like, well, I heard it this way and they were expecting to get some big burning thing. And then in the end, yeah. find out like they got duped by, you know, people clickbait and, uh, mm -hmm. or, you know, all of the different negative people online who are, you know, just trying to stir the pot type of deal so yeah it's really it's really sad um they're they're taking it really well they're even being accused at one point of like you know making money off of how they're doing this and stuff but i mean this is a family that they've hiked the entire appalachian trail together and wrote a book about it um, yeah. the youngest who is six was two years old at the time and did the appalachian trail with them and they got nice. cps and they got cps called on them while they were on the trail so Come on. that's the People. kind of stuff yeah they've been dealing with it for a while so it's not i mean they're veterans in the fashion of dealing with cps and how it goes about but at the same yeah. time it's one of those things where it's like you hate to see it and, and it all really just comes down to people like it not fitting into their their mold mm -hmm. of of how parents sure. should be which in all honesty like people just need to realize like there are different so many different types of parenting so mm -hmm. many 
And just because you were parented one way or you parent one way does not mean that somebody else parenting in a different way is wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm all for, I would say again, I'm, I err on the side of caution. If someone thinks my kids are being abused at school or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's, let's have it checked out and made sure. sure. I would want that for everybody because of how easy it is for kids that are abused or neglected to slip through. Right. You know, and to never be reported. So, you know, the school systems are erring on the side of caution. They want to make sure everything is just want to make sure that nothing's going on. And, and I appreciate that. And I think we should do that to a point, but use your common sense. Right. You know, okay. Yep. So you, I mean, granted your kid's standing up in the back seat of your car and doesn't have a car seat and he's four. Uh, yeah, that's not safe. You need to do something about that. That's <laughs> yeah. that we, that is a known thing that no one, everybody would, I think agree. No, no, that's not safe. We right. need to have, you know, inappropriate seating and seat belts and all that. Um, or your kid's not wearing a seatbelt. Well, again, yeah, we need to make sure we protect <laughs> Just them. because you did that in the 80s doesn't mean yeah, it's right. okay now. <laughs> That's right. it's, not, it's, it's a completely different world I, now. Because I can totally right? say, like, I've definitely been in those situations before yeah. when I was younger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I've hit my head on a windshield a couple times. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, sorry, man. You know, it was, it's it's terrible. But but again, yeah. we know now that it's, you know, especially if you look at, a, at the speeds that we drive if oh, you get into a bad yeah. accident, you need to, your kid to be belted up if you're on the highway or if you're going over, you know, well, any, you know, leaving your neighborhood, you still need to be belted up. I think oh, you definitely. Get that. Yeah. But if you're looking at a kid, oh, well, you know, you, I don't know, let's say something stupid. Uh, you, wait, you use sign language to talk to your kid? Because that is a big thing that we do with yeah. a lot of babies and you should with an infant because you can get them communicating to, to you know, start their, their right, communication right. round. Wait, wait, you you made them learn sign language? <laughs> That's terrible. No, I just, when he needs to put, if he's, if his diaper's dirty, he does the whatever hand, I don't remember the hand signals for it, but he does that. And he tells me, that's the discomfort that he's feeling. So he's learned to communicate in that way. And then you go off right. the chain and go, well, you're demanding that your child learns another language before they're even a year old. We're going to calm down, calm down. <laughs> right. Baby's not hurt, <laughs> you know, but it doesn't, it's not you protecting the child anymore is no. what it is. You're, it's you're you putting... trying to be a um, uh, virtue signaling, you mm -hmm. know, where you're going, well, I would never take my child on, you know, I mean, if I said that, I'm like, I would never take my child on a marathon. Yeah, you would look at me. Yeah, Danny, you're a fat guy. You don't run marathons. I get it. <laughs> but for me to say, you know, oh, well, I would never do that because it's abusive. No, it's not. No. I mean, and, and kids and, and people, kids are resilient. I mean, there, yeah, there were some people who were like, very oh, much. like, they don't know what the, you know, how that's going to tax the body of that child. And like, that was like the conversation, like there was one marathon runner that was saying like, they are, they don't know how that tax, I'm like this family, it's not their first marathon. Like they get right. it. And not to mention this six-year-old after he run his marathon, he was up jumping on a trampoline. And I know marathon runners that are like laying on the couch going, I'm going to die. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm never horrible. going to get off this floor. I, I need two days to recuperate. And he's yeah. all like jumping on the trampoline going, where's my popsicles? You know, like, I mean, yeah. Nice. So yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. And it, it does come down to just, you know, one well, parenting style bait. versus another. Oh, and totally and clickbait. Yeah. Reading one little blurb and just, just, just foaming at the mouth mm -hmm. because how dare you, I can put people, they write those headlines to make you want to get upset mm -hmm. because you don't get any, you don't get any positive. I mean, you don't get any money from a positive response in social media. Right. Exactly. You make money off the anger and off the hate and off the, Oh, I dislike this. And you know, all of that vitriol that comes from, yes. you know, the, the snapshots that we get of somebody else's life. You know? Yep. So. Well, so, so to swing back into some funny stories from where we okay. were talking about, mm -hmm. <laughs> these are great, man. I mean, there are some good ones. So we're not going to name anybody's name in these. We're just, I'm just going to read through some of these stories. So one says, my mom once took me to a church function. I told the priest she had a drinking problem. <laughs> then I told the kindergarten teacher my dad was a bank robber. They truly <laughs> just, <laughs> they're truly just kind of boring suburban parents. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. My favorite one is this one. Uh, we were on vacation when I was about six or so. My parents wouldn't get me the fancy pancakes at IHOP. So I wrote, please help me. I've been kidnapped by the oh people, er, <laughs> by these people call the police <laughs> on the back of a kid's meal or a kid's menu. Uh, not effective. Oh my God. And 
even think... after my dad, it, like he wrote this for like showed his parents. So not effective. And even after my dad explained to the deputy that showed up that I wasn't being kidnapped, I still didn't get my fancy pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> to, to which to which one of the people responded, "Yeah, you probably got your ass whooped." And I'm like, "Yeah, probably." <laughs> yeah. yeah, you definitely didn't get pancakes for a while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was um, not the answer some of the other ones well, it's are, just things that kids yeah. yell out to one of them is like because uh, when you're teaching your kids stuff they have no filter they don't have any reason not to say the things you said to them you know they right. don't even if you tell them don't say this at the store don't tell your teacher that you have a penis your teacher is completely aware you know that your teacher doesn't need to know about that okay they're they're, they're fine they understand no need to scream it out right and then the one kid that said to the cashier um if you don't clean your butt well, it'll itch, you know, and it's just like, yeah, it, 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 you know, you can't argue with his logic. He's right. And yet yeah. it is something you taught them, but no, I don't, you don't need to tell any other adults yeah. how to clean their butt. Okay. You, yeah. they, they all have either figured it out or they're never going to figure it out one or the other. And you just need to just keep that private, but kids don't. Well, that's well, what's like, great about them. I, and I got one that goes along with, with the penis, uh, type situation here in a second because uh it, it it goes along with uh shannon carpenter so uh and and it's actually in here which i think is even funnier because jeremy haston posted it <laughs> so so somebody posted i can share in your pain my daughter used to scream help when we got anywhere to help her out of the car like seriously kid stop <laughs> screaming help i'm gonna get you out someone's gonna think i'm stealing you <laughs> <laughs> at this point i like I, I i thought i was missing some of these so i actually put in here i'm just here for the entertainment and it is not disappointing <laughs> yeah the whole thing um so here's here's another one so i was at the dmv years ago with my son he was three the lady next to me started talking to me all of a sudden she burst out laughing my kids <laughs> got their penises out and were pulling them like rubber bands <laughs> Yep. <laughs> so mm -hmm. this is when Jeremy steps in and goes, well, uh, Shannon wrote a great article about this called my toddler sings the penis song constantly. I wish I were I wish dead. I, were dead. <laughs> I don't know if you have not seen this or read this. I actually got to hear this in person at dad two a few years ago before nice. he published it. It is hysterical. It is all about him going to a, uh, like, reading time at a library and his kid like basically learning that he had a penis and singing a song about it in front of everyone <laughs> yeah yeah and, and and no problem with it all like this is what we're supposed to do yeah this is like, you know i always said i could <laughs> yeah you're supposed to do that at home buddy <laughs> yeah but it's it's a great article i'll post a link for it because it is so worth reading mm -hmm. and shannon's such a great like he's such a great writer honestly. very down to earth it's very it's a earth. perfect it, it's just it's so well done um mm -hmm. I'll, I'll 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 read uh, these last couple ones that these are so there's one that says when my now two-year-old daughter is in her teens one day while she's taking <laughs> taking a dump i'm going to just walk in and sit in the floor and pull it <laughs> like so like this is like more of like a like you know getting back at your kids kind of thing which i totally understand like kids run into the bathroom all the time like I don't, this has never happened. I, I guarantee this dad's not going to do this, but you think about like those kind of situations where you're like, you know, when my kids are older, I'm going to like call them up at like 2 a.m. You know, kind of deal. Like, <laughs> like hey, I need hey, some jello. <laughs> were you, yeah, you sleeping? Because I need like, some water. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's that whole idea. You know, I, I still took this. My favorite thing to do, honestly, anytime I can do this, you were talking about it because you do it at home dad con from time to time where you're like, start yelling, like, dad dad you in there and like yeah. you know putting your hand up up underneath the stall kind of thing <laughs> i do that with Corey because yep. um the bathroom mm -hmm. on our main level there's enough room for me to fit my fingers underneath there and so i'll do that there <laughs> from time to time she gets so mad but she hadn't thrown a hammer at you by yet uh, yeah no kidding right yeah um so yeah so stuff like that um let's see here a month ago uh we were in some place i don't know what the name of that is i asked my son to make a a potty trip because we were about to head home. So, you know, like, Hey, you go to the bathroom before we leave from his grandma's house. Cause they had a three hour drive. He proclaims quite loudly right next to a table of four. My penis doesn't have any pee in it. <laughs> now, luckily that was at home, but <laughs> still, <laughs> that, that grandma had to be like, yeah, that's you. Yep. <laughs> that's and, how uh, my mom would react. 
Uh, I'm just going to tell you that Schlotzky's, Schlotzky's mm. Deli. Oh, okay. That's what that's pronounced. Okay. I've heard that before. I just, yeah. what my brain was uh, not computing what that name that's was. That's all right. You've had a long day. So, okay. I'm so they were in a Schlotzky's. Okay. So they weren't even at home. They were at a Schlotzky's. Yeah. They were at a, at a so restaurant. That was, too, that was a public that. place. Okay. <laughs> that's even funnier. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it all comes down to this, though, that the whole idea that kids say the darndest things. Oh, uh, yes. One of the few things we can take from Bill Cosby still uh, <laughs> one of the few. Um, but it's the whole it's that whole idea of kids say things. And honestly, mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of times they're just testing, testing us to see how we're going to be. But the best part is, is that as they get older, we eventually the tables turn and we get to be the ones that get to embarrass them. <laughs> I've seen some amazing, um, embarrassing things that dads have done, including one dad. I remember a couple of years ago, showing up to a school in a speedo to pick his kids up because <laughs> his kid was on like the swim team. <laughs> just, you know, I'll be here at four 30 to pick you up. If you're not here, I'm going to come in. Right. And that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, 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 dad, what are you doing? I'm just coming in to get my kid. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It's legal, legal wear. I'm, I'm legally allowed <laughs> to wear this even in a school. Yep. Well, and that's, so it's kind of funny, like you know, these kids do these things and they don't remember them unless we tell them later on a lot of times, mm-hmm. but then we get, you know, 10, 12 years to like, think of all the ways that we're going to get them back for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I tell my kids the stories of stuff they did as children and, and they laugh and they have a great time. You know, so it's, it's a wonderful moment for them, but they never recall that they did it. You know, right. they, they, they only remember that I told them the story and then like, Oh, did I do, I did this when I was a kid. Yeah, you did. And it, it was awful. Don't do that again. You know, don't, <laughs> don't write your name in poop, which, you know, oh. first, first letter, the mm. first thing that my son, my, well, my 12 year old had ever written, my dad, dad, I finally wrote my name, my letter, which, you know, the first initial first letter that any of them wrote was the first initial of their name. So they're just easy because it's very important for them to know their own. Yeah. Yeah. There was a big J in poop <laughs> from his diaper. I'm like, oh, son, that's amazing. That is wonderful, my child. I'm so glad you learned to write today. <laughs> I would much rather have found this in marker on the wall. <laughs> right? Yes, absolutely. But it's fantastic that you've developed your literary literacy skills. Yeah, exactly. How do I not poop. make this sound awful? <laughs> Talk through my teeth the entire right. time. I am trying to be positive and encouraging, but it's poop in my carpet. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. think when you're older and you're in a nursing home and your kid walks in and you're like, look, I got, look, I wrote my name in poop. Dad. <laughs> what? <laughs> I wrote my name on your wall. <laughs> we, we always, sorry, revert not back sorry. To, as we get older, we revert back to being children. So I guess mm-hmm. that's, <laughs> well, I'm glad because I'm halfway there. So I'm already, well. <laughs> I'm already a child, definitely 12. I've noticed that a lot. Oh God! Definitely twelve. So, well, I definitely anyway. well, I definitely needed this laugh tonight. Uh, so same. Yeah, this, this was uh, this was good. Um, you know, for Tuesday, it's been a long week, <laughs> right? Just, no kidding, really yeah. long week. Yeah, for anybody that doesn't know, we record on Tuesday nights, and so and we release the Monday after, and so yeah, two you know one two days into the week, and it already feels like it's been an eternity. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's never a good thing. Um, so before we go, one thing I will let you know is that we have landed an amazing guest for next week so you won't want to miss out uh we have uh the legendary uh man himself john francis from father's eve he's going to come on Mm -hmm. next week and uh we're going to talk father's eve and all the things that are uh planned being planned and cooked up for what's going to be an awesome june 18th uh, father's eve wherever you are and if you have never heard of father's eve check it out fathereseve.com uh, if you've got some uh, dads in your neighborhood or guys that you hang out with that are dads um, and you just want to get together f- uh, for a night of cooking out and celebrating fatherhood, uh, this is the event for you. It is. It's it's a great time. So uh, we'll have John on to talk about more what's going on with that. But until then, we'll talk to you all next week. Good night, everybody. I'm a dad. That's what I do.